It's an absolutely gorgeous fall morning here in our little cove. And it's going to be my last chance for several days to work in the garden. I've got quite a few things to work on. So I'm bringing down some tools, some garlic to plant, and we'll see how it goes. I've got a lot to do. The marigolds are absolutely bursting with blossoms, and I'll be cutting some of those to save for botanical prints. And even though most of the garden is waning and there's not much left, there's comfrey blooming. This is brand new starts that I put in roots and these blossoms are just gorgeous. I'm hoping to do, I don't know what with them, but it's a beautiful thing. And now I'm gonna to have to go change my shoes because the grass is really wet and I think I should have put on my rubber boots. Back in a minute. So I've got my rubber boots on and I've brought down a couple more things that I'm going to need in a little bit. But first, I'm going to plant some garlic. I ordered this and it just came a couple of weeks ago, but right now is the perfect time to plant it. Can't wait. Garlic. Of course, it'll be July next year before it's ready to go. I've got quite a few bulbs to plant, so I could use a little sustenance. This super yummy sugar snap is going to help. It's so fresh and crispy, absolutely delicious. Now back to the task at hand, planting the garlic. I've got one bulb left, so I think I'm going to plant it over next to what's left of the Cherokee purple tomatoes. There's one tomato. So things are, are growing, you know, not much, but something. And so now we'll have some garlic and also next to the comfrey. So that's it for planting garlic, but I'm just going to stand here for a second and enjoy this beautiful crisp fall morning. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's just perfect. So my next task is to deal with my seven gallon bucket of walnuts. I need to extract the walnuts from the husk. I'll be using the husk and then returning the walnuts back to the wild but I'll be using them for natural dyes in my botanical prints. And you know, who knows, maybe I'll make walnut ink. 
um, walnut dye. That's it's going to be. We'll see. But first, I've got to put on gloves, rubber gloves, because the walnuts are they they're very messy. My hands would be absolutely black and stained for a long time. There's my seven gallon bucket. And not only are they staining, but the walnuts are, they're starting to rot a little bit and, and there's worms inside there. And so not only is it mushy and nasty and messy, I just, the thought of like squ squeezing it, oops, I'm <laughs> getting the, uh, putting the, the wrong things in the wrong buckets. Uh, okay, now back to get on, getting on task here. So even though I've got close to seven gallons of walnuts, I'm really not going to be able to use all of them, but I think I'll have plenty. The smaller steel pan is, is about five gallons, and that's going, to be, that's going to end up being just about full, and that's a lot, so I think I'll be fine because a lot of what's in the bucket is, unfortunately, I waited too long and they've, they've rotted. But you can see I've got a lot, so I'm happy. But now I'm going to return what I've not used. So that's the walnuts and then the, the rotten ones. I'm just going to take them over to close to where I found them under the, the big walnut trees at the edge of our property and just Maybe hopefully the squirrels and the other critters will, will make use of them. Hopefully. But if anything, they'll break down. And now I'll go down to the creek or my little branch to rinse out the buckets. It's, um, it's pretty silted up right now, but there's still a tiny little bit of water flowing through so I can get the buckets rinsed out and put away. Next on my agenda is harvesting some of the marigold blossoms. I'm going to use these in the botanical prints as well. The bushes are so abundant and I'm going to leave most of these because I want the seeds later so I'll be able to replant for next year. We'll see how long they hold up because we've got a frost coming pretty soon. But lots of blossoms and they make beautiful prints. So that's it for the chores in the garden. And now I get to haul this pretty heavy bucket of walnut husk back up to the house. It's a little bit of a hike and it's uphill. So I'll probably be kind of winded by the time I get up there. Of course, going into the shed to collect whatever things I'm going to need for other things, uh, for other experiments is always an adventure, you know, headlamp, and who knows what you're going to find. Today I'm just finding my equipment for dyeing. So more stainless steel pots and some strainers and some other little goodies that I'll need for my botanical prints and dyes. And now I've got more things to haul up to the house. I really pooped myself out today. This is lots of hauling, lots of carrying things up and down, back and forth. But it's nice living on a big property. Just gotta grab everything. And plus, oh my gosh, look at the scenery here. Look at these leaves, look at the fall colors. Just being outside on this beautiful day is, is just something to cherish and to just to enjoy.
So it's warmed up a bit and I've adjusted my layers. I'm wearing my wonderful carame knits lightweight wool vest, which is the perfect layer for this time of year. And I've brought up the last of the marigolds and I've got the walnut husks simmering on my Coleman stove. And um, it's, I actually really like the smell, it's kind of spicy. And so making this big thick walnut stew, it's gonna be a great dye. And then next on my agenda is I'm going to start collecting some more leaves for botanical prints. A lot of the leaves that are down are brown and so I'm looking for the red ones and I'm trying to find a variety of leaves. We've got quite an abundant selection of trees on our property. There's mostly around the house there's birch and maple but we've also got some uh, a lot we've got some poplar and oh my gosh it's just look at this it's just glorious. What a perfect day. And now I'm moving on to our, what we call our little glen. It's this sort of magical little alcove we have next to the house. Again, mostly maple, a lot of birch and some poplar. But there's also a locust tree and I'm looking for that. I'm hoping there's still some locust leaves that I can add to the mix. And again, taking a moment to appreciate this beautiful place that I live. Not taking it for granted one bit. Now I'm going up our logging road. There's a few more varieties of trees up there. Again, this is it's birch and maple, but there's also sourwood and sassafras and oak so i'm hoping to find you know an even bigger variety so that i'll have hopefully get some really interesting prints for my botanical prints when i get ready to do that Well, it looks like a pretty good variety. I think this will be a lot of fun and hopefully we'll get some good prints. I'm just not sure when I'm gonna be able to do it because I've got rain coming. And look at the reflection of the leaves and the lid of the pot. The walnuts have been simmering now for a bit and I just had them simmering and not boiling. So now it's time to turn that off. Here's my crazy little die set up. I've got my Coleman stove and the, all of my harvesting from today. So I've got the, there's the marigolds that I've um, put in a Ziploc bag for now and my bucket full of leaves from all around the property. This is, if I can get this open, this will be, uh, it's a jar of um, iron water. So that will be used to um, modify the, the dye colors and soak the marigold leaves. But you know, it's, it's kind of a funky setup, but it works, but today is our last sunny day because now it's raining oh my gosh it's been raining for three days and it's going to be a couple more days before I can finally get back out and outside to do the botanical prints but it's still a beautiful day and I'm savoring the last of the leaves the last of the fall color because soon they'll be gone and the shift to winter will begin <laughs> 